will be exploring the principle of art of balance. Balance is achieved through the even distribution of weight in a composition. Now, when I say weight, I can be referring to two different definitions of weight. I might be talking about the actual weight or how much something physically weighs in pounds or grams. Apart from its scale, what makes the spoon bridge and cherry so interesting is the way that it is balanced. It feels like something that should tip over or slide to the side, yet it remains erect and upright. We can also look at the mobiles by Alexander Calder as wonderful visual representations of balance of actual weight in action. The beauty of the mobiles is how smoothly they glide and transition. Even though it takes on many different iterations, a mobile by Calder is especially designed to have balance no matter the orientation. In addition to actual weight, though, there is such a thing as visual weight or the apparent lightness or heaviness of a shape. Visual weight is how someone achieves balance in a 2D composition. It doesn't make sense to actually weigh out the amount of paint that is being put on one side of a canvas or another. What makes the most sense is to measure the visual impact. Heavier objects tend to be more saturated. The more neutralized or desaturated a color, the less visual weight it possesses because it draws your attention less. We are much more attracted to bright, saturated colors. Therefore, they appear visually weightier. Darker colors also feel heavier than lighter colors. So something that is darker in value has more visual weight than something that is lighter in value. And then within their own inherent properties, some hues appear lighter or heavier than others. And the most visually weighty or heaviest hue in and of itself is, of course, red. Let's take a moment to recall from your earlier lessons, what is that source of red in nature that leads to our quick recognition of red? And then what is an example of a design that you encounter in your daily life that uses the power of red to grab your attention? Now, there are many ways to order either visual or actual weight to achieve balance. The best way to think about this is to imagine an abstraction of a seesaw. One way to achieve balance is to every time you put one object on one side, you put the exact same object in the exact same place on the opposite side of your canvas. If you do that, where you have one red square on the left, you put the same red square in the same place on the right, you will always have visual balance, but you'll also have a very predictable and not maybe that interesting piece. Another way to achieve balance is when you put your visually heavier object closer to the center of your composition, you can balance that out with a little bit visually lighter object somewhere around your edge. The lighter an object is visually, the further from the center it has to be placed in order to balance out that weightier object because it's dragging your eye along. You can also achieve balance by having two objects that have similar visual weight but are actually distinct objects that have similar correspondences. Consider Christ giving the keys to St. Peter. And how, even though it's not exactly the same on either side of the dividing line of the canvas, it still has similar objects placed on either side that achieve that balance. And then, of course, another great way to achieve balance is to take an intensely visually heavy object 
and balance it with many of your visually lighter objects. And so that increased complexity, even though those objects maybe don't individually have a lot of visual weight, that increased complexity helps to balance out your weightier object. Now let's explore some artworks where balance is achieved through symmetry or the relationships from one part of a composition to the other. So symmetrical balance is when parts of a composition correspond to one another in terms of their size, their shape, their color, or their arrangement. The Taj Mahal and the pool that leads up to it are a great example of symmetrical balance. Along the dividing line, the parts correspond to one another. Now bilateral symmetry is a specific subtopic of symmetrical balance. And that's symmetry based on a single line that corresponds to the halfway point of your composition. While this doesn't necessarily mean that everything is exactly the same on either side of that dividing line, they definitely do reference one another when you are talking about bilateral symmetry. The extreme of bilateral symmetry would be absolute symmetry, where each half of the composition is exactly the same. This is the kind of symmetry that you see in a butterfly's wings. Whatever's on the left wing is also going to be on the right wing. So absolute symmetry versus bilateral symmetry is like squares and rectangles. Every square is also a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. All absolute symmetry has bilateral symmetry, but everything with bilateral symmetry is not necessarily absolute. You can have similar things on the sides of your dividing lines, but they may not necessarily be a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, radial balance is symmetry that originates from a central point and then radiates outward like the spokes of a wheel. We often see radial balance in rose windows in cathedrals because they start from a central point, often the figure of Madonna or Mary because she is the center of Catholic tradition. And then there are elements that come outwards and each one takes up the same amount of space like slices of pie. Now balance is not just achieved through symmetry. Balance can also be as easily achieved through asymmetry. An asymmetry is a composition that doesn't have a direct one-to-one -one correlation along any kind of dividing line. So no matter where you split this particular composition, the tale of Perseus and Andromeda, none of the parts have a direct reflection to one another. Yet that doesn't mean that the piece is imbalanced. So that's your question for today. How is the artist in this work achieving balance even though the piece itself is asymmetrical? How are they using those elements or principles of art to still communicate a sense of balance?